extraordinary scenes unfolding truly coast to coast at this point. Um, we can put this up on the screen. This is from University of Texas, Austin. Now, they sent in an overwhelming police force. By the way, this is DPS. These are some of the, uh, that's the agency, or some of the cowards that would not go in when it was Uvalde children who were at risk, but you know, they can show up here and they're all suited up and uh, crack some college kids' heads. So these were some extraordinary scenes that were happening here. I just wanna be clear, there aren't even any reports of anything even colorably anti-Semitic at UT Austin, um, nor any violence, no quote unquote eye stabbing incidents. And we'll get to that in a minute and how that was a complete hoax. But you can see this is happening around the country. You've got Brown, you got University of Southern California, you've got University of Minnesota, you've got Columbia, of course, you've got NYU. This is just a, a sampling um, of the type of scenes that are truly unfolding at elite and you know normal state institutions around the country and the type of crackdown that they have been met with. Um, in particular, at UT Austin, there was a, a local press cameraman with the local Fox News affiliate who was tackled and arrested by these police for just being there to document the protest and what was going on. Just take a look at this, you can narrate this, and then there's actually an interview with him that I can show you. So you see him there with his camera, like he's got his press yeah, credentials job, on, right. he's just doing his job. And you can see him grabbed by the police, thrown to the ground, okay? And then he is um, zip tied and arrested. Here, um, let's go ahead and switch up, throw to, we, he was interviewed by someone else who was on the scene there and explains like, I'm just here trying to do my job. Let's take a listen to what he had to say. Who are you with? I'm with Fox 7. Fox 7, yeah, what's, you? Your, what's your name? Carlos. Carlos, what do yes. you think of this? I think it's, uh, they were pushing me and I. they say that I hit an officer. I didn't hit an officer. Were you? They were pushing, you know what, what I mean? They were pushing me. I'm a legal observer. What's your name and, name and date of birth? Uh, we're gonna send attorneys to you. Oh, God, Has this ever happened? No, it's never happened to me. It's never happened to me before. What is going on? I mean, he's and literally doing his job. You can see very clearly on camera he didn't push anybody. No. He has his uh, press credentials that are around his neck. He had the live view backpack, so he's broadcasting live and while they're They've charged done. him with criminal trespassing, right. which also tells you that, oh, he hit an officer is bullshit because if he hit an officer, Maybe. he'd be charged with assault. Exactly. Even if it was like colorable, but that was com a complete lie. So he's this American journalist, local news journalist, being charged with criminal trespassing for doing his job. Governor Abbott has almost certainly violated Texas law here. Uh, and we can show you some of the evidence. Let's go ahead and put this up there on the screen. Governor Abbott tweeted, quote, arrests are being made now, right now, and will continue until the crowd disperses. These protesters belong in jail. Listen to this very clearly. He says, anti-Semitism will not be tolerated in Texas, period. Students joining in hate-filled anti-Semitic protests at any public college or university in Texas should be expelled. So he is explicitly saying that the protest is being broken up because of ideology. This, again, is very clearly a violation of Texas law, which clearly lays out that at a public university, the only way that you are allowed to break up protests is in violation of time, place, and manner stuff that is on the books. The organization, the free speech organization, FIRE, put this out. Let's put this up there on the screen. They say that the chilling show of force of the UT is a disproportionate response to an apparently peaceful protest, sending in a phalanx of law enforcement threatens protected speech where it should be at its most free, a public university like UT Austin. Governor Abbott's public commentary clearly makes it a disregard for the First Amendment's protection of political speech clear. We encourage those with First Amendment rights who are threatened at UT Austin or elsewhere to contact fire. This is specifically a law called SB 18, which is a Texas free speech legislature, a law that passed several years ago. It allows university to create disciplinary uh, actions for students who, quote, interfere with free speech activities, but it does and put into place very clearly restrictions on the time, place, and manner of such activities and specifically um, areas of the public university. Remember, you know, Texas taxpayers and the federal government are the ones who fund this university. Right. This is not Columbia. Columbia is private land, it's private university, and they can technically do whatever they want. But in public universities, it's a whole other ball game. And this reminds us very much of a lot of the stuff that happened during the Vietnam War. Yeah, listen, yeah. I'm not a legal expert on this, but I can tell you the Supreme Court has upheld numerous 
numerous times that First Amendment rights apply on public university yes, campuses. Right. Yeah. So when you're talking about this kind of crackdown at UT Austin, it is a very different, the moral landscape is the same, but the legal landscape is very different. And then you also have to talk about just the incredible hypocrisy here. I mean, this man was how long ago crowing about free speech on college campus. And then he doesn't even, in his little tweet, he doesn't even claim there's violence. Mm -hmm. As I said, I haven't seen a single report of either violence, anything even colorable as violence, or anything, any anti-Semitic incidents. None of that. He just doesn't like the cause that they stand for. And so he sent in a bunch of cops to arrest, I believe, dozens of students, and including this journalist who's just there trying to do his job. There is no excuse for this. There's no excuse for it. I don't care where you are on this issue. I defended many people who were saying a lot of crap that I find offensive, I don't agree with, I don't like, but I'm like, you have the right to say your offensive bullshit, okay? This is America. And that's, this situations like this are exactly why <laughs> I made sure that I in particular defended the speech that I personally disagreed with and found offensive because that's when it's tough. That's when it matters. I don't wanna hear a single person who is supporting any of this ever say another word about free speech. Like it was always naked and very selective, but it has never been more naked and selective than right now. I mean, some of these like billionaire Republican donors who three minutes ago were funding all of these free speech efforts and pressuring uh -huh. to allow, you know, Ben Shapiro or whoever to appear on college, Milo Yiannopoulos or whoever to appear on college campuses, suddenly it's, oh, oh, I'm offended. This speech is, it's violence. They sound like the greatest caricature. The, the liberals could have never in their wildest dreams imagined this kind of nationwide crackdown from New York to Texas to LA. It is so despicable and enraging. I can't even begin to comment. And so disconnected from what is actually happening on these campuses. If you go to the protests, if you speak to the students who are involved in engaging in it, they will come right out and and say, we are totally opposed to violence. We completely condemn that. We completely condemn anti-Semitism. By the way, many of us are ourselves Jewish. Insane, insane situation. Well, I mean, and this is where I even have to move past it and say, even if they were anti-Semitic, they are still US citizens who have the right to do what they want. That's right. If that was a white nationalist group, I would say the exact same thing. And they probably hate my guts because I'm from Texas. And I, apparently, according to them, I shouldn't have even been there in the first place. I don't mind if they if that's what they want to say. You know, we are all Americans. We are have our citizenship. And that's the issue that we find this. Texas, in particular, has had the BDS law now on the books and even enforced it in the past, firing state employees. So they've, they've always had a uh, Israel exception to their free speech law. And I, yeah, it's one of those where this is very clear. Yeah, the optics, again, of the Texas DP which was involved in the horrific response of Uvalde uh, to this. Actually, some of the students on campus were openly chanting this, and this is a likely uh, only a preview of what is to come, especially with the deadline at Columbia expiring sometime in the next 24 to 48 hours. We don't know what's going to happen there. And I want to say, too, uh, like, obviously, with the Columbia example, this isn't a red state phenomenon. This is like a, you know, elite bipartisan yeah, consensus right. in um, California and blue California and L.A. They also sent in the cops to arrest, I believe, somewhere around 100 students um, to keep, you know, an encampment from growing in size there. And They've poured gasoline on the fire. I mean, these encampments, I just saw a message from our friend Motaz, who we had on the show before, who's a Palestinian American activist who's lost more than 100 of his family members um, in Israel's assault on Gaza. They, one just sprung up at GW. Mm -hmm. So uh, this is truly a nationwide phenomenon here. <laughs> I saw someone pointing out on Twitter too, like, the school year is, was almost over. I was going to say, it's over in about like two weeks like, here. If you had just allowed these things to go and do their thing and like peacefully fizzle out, you probably wouldn't have had, I mean, you wouldn't have had this big momentum here at the end of the school year and all of this fraught situation at Columbia University having to cancel ca classes for the rest of the year. Like you wouldn't have had this insanity if the Columbia University president hadn't sent in 
the police to, you know, crack down on these student protesters and really spark this whole conflagration. So um, it's completely contrary to, you know, their desires for all these people to just go away. And the polar opposite thing obviously is happening. And then this is a little bit of a, a tease for your monologue, Sagar, <laughs> but, you know, some of the echoes of 68 here are is particularly profound at Columbia University. You can put this up on the screen. So um, Columbia's own website, this person points out on Twitter, actually literally has a page about how the last time that they had student protesters mass arrested, that they now realize they were completely wrong and that it screwed up their reputation for decades. So let me read this from the Columbia University webpage. It says, Columbia is a far different place today than it was in the spring of 68 when protesters took over university buildings amid discontent about the Vietnam War, racism, and the university's proposed expansion into Morningside Park. After a week-long standoff, New York City police stormed in the campus, arrested more than 700 people. The fallout dogged Columbia for years. It took decades for the university to recover from those turbulent times they go on to say Columbia is commemorating the 50th anniversary of those long ago events with a deep dive of scholarship and exhibits chronicling what happened then and its effects today. So apparently they need to do a little deeper dive into that scholarship to realize that, guess what, those lessons you learned back in 1968, they apply right now today. And I know you're going to draw on some, mm -hmm. of, some more of those historic parallels in 19, from 1968. Yeah. Stay tuned. It is exactly 56 years ago That's to the crazy. day, which is wild, like to the day of where all of this was going down. And uh, if we listen to the lessons of 68, there's a lot more chaos to come. Hey guys, if you like that video, go to breakingpoints.com, become a premium subscriber and help us build the best independent media organization on the planet. That's right. We're subscriber funded. We're building something new. We want to replace these failing mainstream media organizations. So again, to subscribe, it's breakingpoints.com.